Hi, I'm George, and I'll be showing you how to put custom images onto banners, doing things that you can't find inside of the game, like that white rabbit back there. Now, if you like this video, make sure you hit that like button. Don't forget to click on share and subscribe as well. And to find more Minecraft videos, take a look at my channel. All right, and let's get to it. It's possible to put any image you want onto a banner, although there are some basic limitations. One is that you want to have the image in black and white. You then add the color with the loom inside of Minecraft. Okay, I'll show you how this is done. I'll just quickly go over the resource pack. I've explained that in several other videos, and I'll leave links for that where I go into that in more detail. And we'll focus on doing the actual graphics for this. Okay, let's switch out of Minecraft and first take a look at the folders. Okay, here's a vanilla assets folder from Minecraft 1.15.2 that I downloaded and opened up previously. Again, I have a link for that for a different video on how you do that whole big step, but we'll just pass that part here. What we need to know here is where to find those banners. Go into Minecraft, then go into Textures, and into Entity right down here, and your banners are right up here where it says Banner. And they look like this. Don't worry about that PSD file. I'll explain that in just a bit. We'll be playing with a couple of these, the Flower Banner, Globe, and the Mojang. I like using these because they're you know, more complex and not used except in fancier designs. All of your basic stuff I would leave alone in case you want to go back and use that in other banners. We'll be changing the images on these. Anything that you may have made in the past using these will of course be destroyed by this change. So make sure you're not using these in something else and pick one of these images in here that you haven't used so that you won't be overriding any of your previous work. Okay, so all you do is you find the ones you want to work on and then set up a basic resource pack. I have one set up over here. There's my pack.mc meta file. There's my pack.png file. And here's my basic assets. Now what we need in here is the assets folder. Inside of that, of course, is Minecraft. Inside of that, textures. Inside of that, entity. And inside of that is the banner folder. Assets, Minecraft, textures, entity, and banner. So I just recreated that structure over here, that folder structure, and then in here, we'll make our new file. So I have three of these in here. I brought in the flower, which is, of course, that one right here. I brought in the globe, which is that one right there. And I brought in the Mojang, which is this one right down here. And I've saved those out as Photoshop files. I'll be doing this in Photoshop Elements. Any graphics program is fine to do this in. I just happen to like using Photoshop elements for this. Now, the nice thing about this is that Minecraft ignores these files. So you can leave these in here in case you want to go back and change things or work on things in the future. That's just fine. It only looks at the PNG files right there. As long as they have the right name and PNG and they're the right size, everything works out fine. Okay, so that's the first step is to get your default assets folder. Of course, that's the jar file. We talked about that in other videos. Find your banner. Choose the graphics you want to use. Make a new texture pack layout. I have mine in custom texture packs right here. Make a new one. Recreate that folder structure in here. And then simply copy over the ones you want to work on. Okay, I'll now bring up Photoshop Elements. And I'll show you what I did to make these new fancier banners. There we are. And here is a globe. Notice that the image is smaller than the whole file size. You have to keep all of this stuff correct. This actually is designed to fit onto the banner format. And if you're looking at the actual banner file for the structure with the wood frame and all that, all that stuff shows up out over here. So to have this positioned properly on the banner, this has to fit into that section. So don't change any of that basic structure. Just work in this area in here. Now to have more detail, you'll need to up res your image a little bit. The size is 64 by 64, that's the base size. I've up res this to 128 by 128. Now it's easy to do here inside of Photoshop Elements. You just go up here to Image, come down to Resize and Image Size. Other programs have different settings for this. That's the one that is here for Elements. And so we type in the 128 and then down here, I have this set for Nearest Neighbor. This just keeps the sharp edges. Other programs may call this something else, but they'll all have some standard setting for keeping hard edges. That's the one that you want to use. Okay, so I resize this from 64 by 64 up to 128 by 128. That just allows us to get a bit more detail into the image. Now this is two sides, the left side over here. This is the side that is facing you on the wall when you put this on the wall. The right side is the back side of the banner that you see if you walk behind a banner, or if you're holding a banner, it's the side that you can see 
when you're holding it. So front side is left, back side is on the right. Now on this one, I put in a black rectangle. You can see it right there. So that just hides those gloves. And then I brought in an image of a walking man. I put him in white and flipped him for this side over here. So that's the one side and here's the other side. Now where I got this in Photoshop Elements, this is easy. Over here they have some nice shapes. Come down here to this shape button right here and there's a whole bunch of shapes available right down here. All kinds of fun little clip art graphics. You don't have to use these. You can use any graphic you want. Being a little simpler is usually better. It'll work out better if you want to come in and you know add in more colors and so forth. You know, use your other standard tools for improving the look of the banners. You can do that. Now one thing about this, when you do this technique here, anything that's in black is going to show as black on the banner. Anything that's white is going to be the color of the dye that you use. So if you dye this blue, the man is going to be in blue. We'll see how that works out in just a bit. Okay, so that's a real basic one here. The second one I want to show you here is this one. In this case, same basic idea as I did over here. I increase the size of the page to 120 by 128. So I get a bit more detail. I brought in my graphic. I made the graphic white and I flipped it. You just bring in the background here. There's the background. There's my black line in there. So that's what I did. And I put this guideline in here so I can see where the center point was for this, for the front and back sides. And then once I had my two crowns in here properly positioned, I then hid those other two layers, just leaving the white part and then transparency in behind it. What this will do is to allow me to put just the crown here in color onto a colored banner. I won't be seeing any background. This works out the best actually. This gives you a black background and this one gives you a transparent background and then whatever color you choose for your dye goes into the white areas. So this works out very, very easily. Now the last one I did is very tricky and that's this one right here. On this one, there is the background image and that's the flower. You can see it right there. There it is. Now I have a lot of detail in this picture here from Alice in Wonderland. So I made this image a lot larger. Let me show you what the image size is. So image, resize, image size. I put this at 512 by 512. And what this does is it really increases the amount of detail I can pack into this image. So I really raised this up quite a bit to get that. So I want to get all that real nice detail. I found this bit of clip art online and then I simply increased my contrast a little bit and I cut out the whole background, leaving just the bunny in here. It's black on white with a little thin white border around it. And then just like I did with the crown, I left just this image on here. Now keep in mind, when we put this into Minecraft again, whatever is black is going to stay black. Whatever is white will be colored whatever color ink we use. In this case, I used white ink for the white and the black stayed black. And that's really all there is to it. And then you have to save this out as a PNG file. In this case, it's file, save for web. That's a little tool they have here in Photoshop Elements. But it's saved as a PNG 24. And I save with the transparency. The transparency is all saved. And this will be saved that out as a PNG. Again, this will save out at that large size, that 512 by 512 size. That's perfect. No problem with that at all. Let's now look at the resource pack. And I'll show you how to combine that resource pack together. We'll look at that again compile that resource pack and we'll then put that over into Minecraft. Okay, I'll now just close the original one here that's done with. And here's the new resource pack. So those are the Photoshop files we just looked at. And then here are the saved PNG files right there. And you can see this one is at 128 by 128 PNG file. And this has the transparency and the crowns in white. This one over here, again, this is 128 by 128. It's a PNG file and the man is in white and the background is in black. And then over here, this one is at 512 by 512. It's a much larger file size. Again, it's a PNG file and it has the regular black lines on a white background for that image. Okay, I'm just going to back up the few steps here. There we go. So that's the assets folder right there. There's my pack.mc meta that contains this code. I'm working in Minecraft 1.15.2, so the pack format is 5 for that. And I give it a name of custom banners. Let's just call this one custom banners 2 and file save. You can put anything you want in the description here. It doesn't matter. This is just what shows up in the list inside of Minecraft. The PNG file over here, this is a 256 by 256 PNG file. And the picture can be any picture you want as long as it's that size. Okay, now just take these together. Right click, 
I usually use 7-zip for this stuff. I'll come down to Add to Archive. Make sure it's in the zip file format. And let me just give this one a name up here. I'll call this Custom Banners 2. There it is. And choose OK. It then zips that up and there is that zip file right there. OK. Let's now bring back up Minecraft and we'll place this into the Resource Pack folder. Let's now back out of here. Let's go back a couple of steps here. Back to Options, Resource Packs. I'm just going to unload that Resource Pack right there. And choose Done. Bring this back in again. You'll see those things will now disappear. Back to Game. There we go. We're now seeing the original graphics on there. Let's now back out of here and then bring in that new Resource Pack that we just made. Okay, we're back at the menu page. Go into Options right down here, and we'll open up Resource Packs right there. Now there's a custom banner over here on the available side. I want to bring in our new custom banners too. That's down here. Open up Resource Pack folder. There it is. We now need to bring up the other folder and copy that file, that new Resource Pack, over into this location. There it is. There's our new Resource Pack right here, Custom Banners 2. I'll just drag it over here. And that brings it into the Resource Packs folder right there. Okay, that's all done. Get that out of the way. Get that out of the way. Now you'll need to click on Done and then go back into Resource Packs. Again, this allows Minecraft to reread that folder. There it is. There's a Custom Banners 2. Bring that back over here and click on Done. And then we'll go back into the game again. And it should have repaired those banners for us. Click on Done. Single player and right here. Okay, let's check our supplies, make sure that we can do these things. So bring up the inventory down here, see what we have. Now we have our banners right in here, that's fine. I have some blue dye right there, that's fine. Has some black dye right there. Just bring in some more dye. Come down here a little bit, bring in just a few more black dyes, and I'll bring in some white dye in here as well. I'll put that right there, and that should be all we need. Okay, let's go back out again. We can now go to the loom, there it is. Now we made these on those different banner charges. There is the flower charge, there's the globe, there's the thing. We did all of those and there's the skull charge. I didn't bother with that one. Let's do the first one first. I'll just take the light blue banner, put it right here. And let's take the globe, that's the walking man, put him right there and I'll take the blue die. And as you can see here, the black part of that graphic came in as black and then the die dyed the white part so we get that colored banner just like that there we go okay that was that one let's now take a look at the crown i'll use that same light blue banner in here and then that was the flower charge right here actually that was the wrong one that was the thing charge there we go okay so again here's the artwork for that that was a white crown on a transparent background so what we're seeing here is that the crown is colored with the dye, and the background is the color of the banner right there. So that's that one. And then finally, the best one of the whole bunch, and that's that the White Rabbit from Alice in Wonderland. Do a red banner, and that's the flower charge right there. And for that one, I used white dye. And there it is. You can see there is the graphic down here. It was transparent around the image. So we're seeing the red banner behind. The black is showing as black. And then the white in here is from the white dye. If I used a different color dye, like this blue dye, it would then dye that blue. So anything that's white gets colored whatever your dye color is. Anything that's black stays black. And there's that rabbit. Okay, let's go ahead and we'll just place those onto the wall. Find a new spot over here somewhere. I'll just change some of these out. Let's just get rid of that one. There's the rabbit. Put the crown right there. And I'll put that walking man right there. So there you go. That's how you can put your own custom artwork onto your banners inside of Minecraft. Now don't forget if you like the video hit that like button. Also click on share and subscribe as well. And when you click on subscribe make sure you hit that bell icon a couple of times to get notifications of my new videos. Check out my channel for a bunch more Minecraft stuff, and I'll see you next time.